San Juan Mountains are the largest mountain range by area in the Centennial State, spanning 13 counties in southwestern Colorado. In addition to being home to the Ute Indians for hundreds of years, the mountains intrigued Spaniards, lured the prospectors of the Colorado Gold Rush, and attracted thousands of vacationers and seekers of outdoor adventure. Today, the mountains are home to many historic mining towns that are now popular tourist destinations, including Telluride, Silverton, Ure, and Pagosa Springs. The nomadic Ute people lived in the San Juans for more than 500 years, following game up to the high country during the summer and retreating to lower elevations such as the area near present-day Durango during the winter. To supplement diets of elk, mule deer, jackrabbit, and buffalo, the Utes gathered a wider assortment of berries and roots, including the versatile yucca root. On their seasonal migration routes, the Utes trod paths that were later used by Spanish explorers and American miners and road builders. Today, I was able to imagine what what life would have been like early spring for these people, and I was amazed by the vast beauty and scary remoteness that this place has to offer. So I'm driving um, this back way through into Telluride through Rico, Colorado. I came in through Dolores and worked my way to camp near Rico last night. I've actually never driven this stretch of road before, and it is stunning. But last night was frigid cold. We were in the low 20s. It was the coldest that we'd been in in the camper. I did have to turn on the heater several times uh, yesterday and this morning just to get myself prepared for packing up camp. Thankfully, I did most of my pack up last night, so most of my organization stuff was, you know, inside the camper, so that made it a little bit better. But driving along the Dolores River here, and there's tons of free camping back here, and I have seen some sites that I wish I would have stopped at that I could have actually accessed the river compared to where I stayed last night. Now, where I stayed was really nice because it was like tucked away, and uh, there wasn't any, I saw maybe two people the entire time that I was there. I mean, you, you hear the highway noise, but when I say I saw two people, I mean like two cars were back there, um, and then they left. So I was the only one camping there until I left this morning. I noticed that there was someone camping at the very uh, at the entrance. But the plan for today, I'm I'm kind of in a weird position because I'm almost out of dog food again. And the last time I tried to switch my guys' food, they got sick, like really sick. We had issues in the back seat, sick. So I've decided I'm going to drive four hours today to where I buy their food. And there's a Costco there, so I can go to Costco, resupply, and do the things. But that means that I'm leaving this area, which is something that I didn't plan to do. I plan to do this loop, you know, uh, through Telluride, Ure, um, and then back to Durango. But I think I'm going to do a little side trail. The only challenge with this plan is we are approaching Memorial Day. And that's a very populated time for Colorado. A lot of campgrounds are opening, a lot of trails are opening, a lot of backcountry roads are opening on Memorial Day. So I, I suspect it's gonna be a bit crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my propane tanks while I'm out here because the temperatures are calling for some cold nights. And I'm not gonna lie, we've gotten accustomed to having a heater and that's been kind of nice. So I want to go ahead and fill up on propane. But man, these mountain range views of the San Juans are just stunning and spectacular. The San Juans are some of my favorite mountains in the, that I've ever been to, aside from the Wind River Range. But unfortunately with the Wind River Range, you can't really access them unless you're backpacking. So it's nice to be able to see these beautiful San Juans up close in Colorado, unlike the winds. So yeah, there's just tons and tons and tons of free camping options out here. So if you're coming out this way, you're coming through Dolores towards Telluride, definitely plan to find camping because there's tons of it.
Good morning, friends. We are having a great morning so far. I'm gonna go get some coffee and we've detached the trailer and we are going to Aspen. I'm showered, I'm clean, I have fresh lips on. I'm happy, man. It feels good to just kinda get out of the traditional, you know, day to day and go do something fun. You know, I had every intention of sealing the window today because I was staying somewhere for two days and the daggone rain came. So instead of sealing the window, <laughs> we're going to Aspen and we're gonna make the best of it because it's gonna rain later. And I did not put the tarp on the outside this time. I decided to put the tarp on the inside on the bed with some buckets because I don't, I'm not gonna be there and I don't know what the wind's gonna do and I don't wanna annoy you know, the neighbors because I have neighbors right now. But you guys, it's a glorious day here in Carbondale, Colorado, and I am so excited to go out and explore. I've got the dogs with me. We've got our bag packed. We're ready. We are ready. <laughs> All right, I went to this super, super cool coffee house here in downtown Basalt, and I met the, I met two of the, own, uh, two of the workers there. One was from Argentina. I think he said his name was Tomas, but I couldn't, I can't remember. I'm terrible with names. And they do like live shows and stuff on Wednesday nights, and it's of course Thursday morning, so I missed it. But maybe I'll stick around and go check it out next next week. <laughs> but I got a vanilla latte and a cheese danish and it's off to Aspen. You guys, we're about to go over the frying pan river. What a freaking name. That's something I would name something is frying pan. And I thought my danish was cheese, but it's lemon. And that is my absolute least favorite flavor for anything sugary. I like lemon in my water. I like lemon flavor generally, but not in my sweets. I am not a lemon person. So I'm gonna eat around my danish. It's such an abomination. <laughs> Okay, we went through Aspen. I didn't really feel like stopping because they're just, I don't feel like spending money. And he is so excited. He knows we're about to go on a walk. And we just saw a family of deer across the street. So I think we're gonna go get some of this caffeine and energy out and go on a little stroll through this little park here. And then, I don't know, we'll figure out what the day's gonna bring. It was so incredibly green in Aspen, and the contrast with the snow-capped mountains made everything look so lush and vibrant. Okay, I'm just exploring the difficult campground here in Aspen. I've been wanting to stay here for so long, and every time I come through, it's always booked. And now that I have the trailer, I wanted to kind of scout. Well, I just talked to the, the people who manage this campground and they were so nice. They told me which sites would be best accommodating for my setup. So they also said that, they also encouraged me to drive around the loop and see what would work best for me. So that's what I'm doing now, but I think I'm gonna stay here this weekend. I don't typically stay at, I don't like staying at campgrounds, but here I am. I, like I literally just said that 98% of my time is boondocking and here I am with the trailer and I'm over here like oh can I uh, can I stay at these campgrounds because it's just it's different I it's just a really cool experience but they have tons and tons of opening but on May 15th which was last week they had a bear encounter in this campground so bears are active here which I knew but Fun fact, the only time I've ever seen a bear in Colorado was on the Maroon Bells Four Pass Loop, which was here in this area. So, um, yeah, cool. Okay, I found a handful of sites. I wrote them all down on my little notepad and I'm gonna get back into service and potentially book for this weekend because this is gorgeous and honestly the difficult campground is something that I, is a place that I've literally been wanting to stay at for years and it's always been booked. So, I'm gonna try to book. I'm getting kind of touristied out. I'm 
getting tired and I don't feel like going shopping and doing all that stuff because I just don't want to spend the money. So I think I'm going to head back into Carbondale, find something to eat for lunch, and then go back to the camper for a little bit and relax. And then, I don't know, maybe do some laundry because I definitely have laundry to do. So it won't be a waste of a day. But we definitely had fun going on a little walk and exploring Aspen and Snowmass Village and been going into Basel and getting some good coffee even though they gave me a lemon scone but yeah I think I think I've had my taste of touristy stuff and I'm ready to get back to work and get some laundry done and do the things so that's that's gonna be the plan All right, I ended up getting a burrito from Dos Gringos Burritos and a side of Salsa Verde and a Mexican Coke. And it's kind of like a Kidoba vibe, but not quite. <laughs> I have no idea if it's gonna be any good, but we still gonna find out. So it's time to get back to camp and eat this burrito and maybe take a nap because I'm exhausted. This day wore me out. All right, y'all, I got a new hat. Looks just like this one. And of course, I'm not getting rid of this hat. I've had it forever, goodness. But let's break it in and try it on and see, see how it fits. Happy to have variety now with my hats. Okay. All right, what do you guys think? I think that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> but then I also got more duct tape <laughs> so that I can put the camper away when I leave here. That'll hold me over until I can get to an official like hardware store. <laughs> Anyways, I've decided I'm not going to stay at the difficult campground. First of all, when I went to go do a reservation, they didn't have anything for this weekend, even though the camp host said that they did. So I'm just going to keep on moving. I need to go get dog food and do some resupply in Costco. So I'm going to go ahead and keep pushing forward. And I really don't need to spend the money and stay at a state campground, even though I would love to. And if I see one along the way on my route, I will totally stop and stay at one. But we're going to get back to boondocking. Okay, it's starting to rain up in the mountain. And I can feel it starting to sprinkle here. So it's about to begin. I'm going to go into town and get some dinner. I just don't feel like cooking. I need to fill the propane still, but I'm going to Costco tomorrow. So I'm trying to hold off. So I've got the propane currently off. I don't think I'm empty by any means, but I think I'm going to get gas first because I don't have the trailer. So it's so much easier to get gas and do things. And gas is way more expensive in Carbondale than it is in other places. Like, I think I got gas the other day, it was 315. Here it's 380 something, so. Still about beats California prices. Remember the first time that I went to Aspen and I attempted to do the four pass loop and it was the week of July 4th. I had Pike, it was my very first trip out west, my first solo trip, and my first road trip more than five hours by myself. I was so in over my head and that's one of my very first YouTube videos I've ever made and it's horrible. Go watch it. <laughs> but I remember going into Aspen and getting my backpacking supplies at the city market there on your main, main downtown area. And I remember the first time I saw the Kroger products in the city market. I got so excited. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was way too much snowpack. And not only was it my very first like a solo trip by myself with a dog, it was also my very first backpacking trip. And I was going to do the four pass loop by myself with my dogs as a first like initiation. Like I go big or go home, y'all. And you know, I've done that loop twice now and it's still one of my favorites and I'd love to do it again because I feel like I haven't been able to really appreciate that trail. But anyways, I have a little special moment when I'm out in this area and I see a city market. It reminds me of my very first trip. <laughs> That's where we're gonna go pick up my dinner. My, my car is filthy. You guys probably can't even see out of my windshield. There's like no parking anywhere. It's a Thursday night. Okay, I got my 
pizza, my chicken wings, and my salad. So now it's time to go enjoy and hopefully feel better. Look at that mess over Aspen. Oof. You can't even see that big beautiful mountain hardly. It's like all covered in cloud. I just did the biggest Costco run ever, but I got my front seat back full, all stuff. I emptied that freezer earlier, so I stocked that back up with ground turkey, chicken burgers, and things like that. Got some stuff for the next week or so, but man, I spent a lot of money. Now we're heading to our next location, and I've decided that because we're going through Vail, I'm gonna stop at the Qdoba and get lunch at Qdoba. And then hopefully I can find a campsite. That is the plan. I have a suspicion I'm probably going to end up in the Twin Lakes area, but we'll see. We'll see. It is 10.30 on Friday morning, so I'm hoping that I'm still beating the city crowd. But I'm not 100% sure. I'm sure it's going to be crazy, but we are set. I have so much food. <laughs> so now I have to just make a mental note to not forget to plug in my freezer. Anyways, I've got that all in the refrigerator and the freezer cooling off. So we are good for the next couple hours until we can get to camp. But yeah, I'm I'm hungry and I think we're gonna get me some keto, but I haven't had keto in probably, oh my gosh, nine months to a year. I already know that this is gonna be an interesting weekend because I'm just driving the freeway, you know, and I'm cruising 70. I know the speed limit's 70, but I'm staying in the slow lane and passing when I need to get being respectful and people are so agitated like they have to go 90 miles an hour these people are being so outrageously obnoxious like getting in the like emergency lane to like be dramatic about the fact that they they don't want to hit their brakes and be you know a courteous driver so i already know that like this weekend is going to be fun this weekend is going to be fun and I'm being very sarcastic. So I typically try to avoid public places like this, but I have found myself in a very popular spot. So I, I need to have a quick moment for an attitude adjustment because no matter what any of these people do, it has nothing to do with me. My reaction has everything to do with me. So I'm, I'm gonna call myself out right now. I'm having an attitude adjustment check. And uh, we're gonna go into this weekend knowing that it's gonna be a complete crap show. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna have fun. All right, we're getting some propane with the big R right here in Leadville, Colorado. Woo, I've got two full tanks of propane. I said, still had about half a gallon or half a tank on the one, but you know what? It snowed here two feet last week, the guy said, and it is cold at night. So I'm, I'm glad that I topped off. I filled up 22 bucks, we're done. 